what is entropy and why might I describe it as super? What we're going to look at in this short video is how entropy differs from enthalpy and what it is a measure of, finally finishing with how you can calculate an entropy change in an exam. Hi everyone and welcome back. What we're going to be looking at here is a nice simple description of what entropy is for your chemistry A level and then we're going to see how we can calculate the entropy change of reaction or predict the entropy change of a reaction. So just looking at the reaction equation, how we can anticipate what that entropy change would be as that's a really common question in some OCR exams. What we need to look at first then is what entropy actually is. Now entropy is a measure of the dispersal of energy in a system. What does that mean? Well, it means that it's a measure of the scale of disorder. It's a measure of randomness. And so things can have a large amount of entropy if they're very, very random. That's the gas, for example. Or something can have a very low value of entropy, which is going to be something like a solid, which means it's really, really ordered. So disordered things have high entropy, and that's like a gas or a liquid, gas being the most. And solids have got a very high level of order, low level of disorder, and so that makes them have a very, very low entropy value. The units of entropy as well seem a little bit unfamiliar at first. They're joules per Kelvin per mole. And that's where it's really different to a lot of the other stuff you do at A level, like delta G and delta H, which use kilojoules. What that means is whenever you're using entropy in the delta G expression, which is the Gibbs free energy expression, you need to make sure that you've divided the entropy change by a thousand. Now, I don't want to jump the gun too much, so I'm going to come back to entropy changes in a moment. First off, though, let's look at how we could predict it from a chemical reaction. Now, looking at a chemical reaction, you can predict the entropy change by looking at two different things. The first thing you can look at is state symbols. Are we changing states from something with lots of order to something with lots of disorder or less order? Now, you would look at your state symbols, and the big one to keep an eye out for is gas. So have you got solids going to gas, or liquids going to gas, or gas going to solid? If you are transitioning towards a gas, then what you need to bear in mind is that's going to be a massive, enormous increase in entropy, and so that's going to be a positive entropy change in that reaction. So keep an eye out for gas moles if you're going to them. It's a very, very positive change in entropy. And if you're coming from them to something that's more of a liquid, let's say you're condensing something, then you're going to see a reduction in entropy, so the entropy change would be negative. The second thing that you can look at when you're trying to predict the entropy change of a reaction is you can look at the number of moles, how it's balanced, the stoichiometry of the equation. So that's considering the coefficients in front of each of the molecules or ions or whatever is in your equation. Now, looking at these, you can link it to the first thing I mentioned about a gas. So, for example, if you've got two moles of gas becoming three moles of gas, the state symbol on its own doesn't seem very helpful there. However, the coefficient in front that shows you that you've got more moles in the product, so that would be a positive entropy change. So going from less moles to more moles is going to be positive in terms of an entropy change. Do be careful with that, though. Keep an eye on gaseous moles, because if you had two moles of a solid going to one mole of a gas, I don't know what reaction that would be for, but two moles of a solid going to one mole of a gas is a reduction in moles, but that gas has got such a high level of entropy that it's still probably going to be a positive entropy change. So keep an eye out for changes in moles and changes in state symbol for predicting how entropy changes can be. The other thing we can talk about is how you could calculate it from given values. So what happens if you're actually given entropy values? Well, you need to remember that entropy is super. So entropy has the symbol for a reaction, a capital S, and so S equals products minus reactants. And so entropy change, delta S, equals products minus reactants, which if you put a U and an E in there, reads like super. I know, it makes you die a little inside, it's a bit cringy, but when all else fails in the exam, you'll remember it, and it'll help you feel a little bit more secure on the day. You've gotta trust me with this. I've been teaching this for years, I know that that will help you feel a little bit more relaxed on the day. Just don't forget to divide it by a thousand if you then have to use it in the delta G expression later down the question. I hope that gives you a nice little description of what entropy is. 
Don't forget to subscribe at the end of this video. So click the little subscribe symbol now and click the little bell as well and you'll keep up to date with all the things that we upload throughout the year, which will give you the best chance of getting an A or an A star in your chemistry A level. I'll leave you to the rest of our playlists and videos. Happy revising.